You got into boat building. You're like 16. Um, you got a good. Sounds like you got a good boss going. Yeah. Um, what type of um, boats would you guys be building at that point? So we um, we're building sports fishes, which is all fiberglass sports fishes, pretty much. We're doing that. We're doing um, luxury sort of, not so much super yachts, but like the sort of 50 foot, 60 foot sort of boats as well. Um, also yachts. We did like quite a variety of things, which was good. Um, so I pretty much did my time there and from there I went and worked, I was making carbon fibre components for super yachts. So I ended up working at this crowd for a couple of years and one of the guys that I'm still mates with now, he was like, oh, why don't you come with us? We, we'll have to cook some boats. I was like, oh, yeah, sweet, cook some boats was a like, top place to sort of work at. So I um, managed to get a job there and yeah, was working with a few guys, still mates with now, they're all um, in Team New Zealand now. But um, yeah, it was definitely a good learning curve and just like you're working with verniers, you know, you're not, oh, 10 mil's fine, like you, half a mil, no, nah, we've got to grind it back, make it perfect, you know. So there's no sort of room for error or just letting things slide. So the personality of someone that becomes a boat builder, is it someone that's kind of like has high attention to detail or you're forced to? Yeah, I think they are definitely do have a higher attention to detail. Um, it does have to be perfect. There's no room for error. Um, even their work ethic is like up there. Like they just work hard, and there's no sort of mucking around on site as well. I reckon. Um, yeah. That's and a lot of the sort of the hard men, eh? Like a lot of old school kind of mentalities, eh? You just got to get on with it. Work in real um, narrow spaces. Yeah. You just got to suck it up and just do get it. Get in there. Yeah. You'd have your full face masks on, your overalls, everything like that, and then you'd be grinding, and it's just itchy it's dark and you're sweating in summer it's it's all it's all messy but um at the end of it like you had this sort of masterpiece of a boat to stand back and look at that's off competing you know it's it's cool what was the coolest part about being a boat builder at that point um we used to get time and a half back then so it was pretty good <laughs> um but it was just watching your product it, it was racing it was competing like there's not much like that in building, like you'd have the Master Builders Awards, which is good, and that's awesome to be a part of if you can get into that. But um, yeah, that was probably the sort of highlights for us. And yeah, America's Cup, that's what you're sort of working towards, right? Yeah, 100%. So talk to me a little bit about that. So you went and worked for, um, did you work for Prada or did you work? Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we're doing the America's Cup, the 72 foot cats back in for the 2013 Cup. Um, we're doing those back at Cooks and Boats and then they brought over Luna Rossa, so that's Prada, brought over their cat for us to do the fit out. Um, so we did that there at Cookson's and from there they oh they needed somebody else to jump on their shore crew. So I was like, oh, just put my hand up and yeah, made the cut. So that I did and worked in with them as part of the shore crew. We were some big days, six days a week, seven days a week, sort of sell your soul in a way, but it's a good, it's good atmosphere. It's a good vibe there. Um, yeah, it's enjoyable. That's for sure. And we, what was it like when you, uh, you know, because obviously America's is Italy, right? The Prada, yeah, Italy yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to go work over to Italy, or did you work just in New Zealand? Nah, so we worked down in Auckland. Down at the, we had our base down there. Um, so we were there for several months, six months possibly, and then from there we uh, moved over to San Fran. So everyone sort of packed up and moved over there. Brought all their families. If you had a family, um, so for living over there it was was right in the city i had like awesome spot you're walking around all the prada gears it's pretty good <laughs> cool vibe feels yeah. like you're part of the you are part of the team right well, so. yeah yeah you're amongst it all um pasta pasta for breakfast pasta for lunch pasta <laughs> for dinner you know like because we had chefs cooking our meals yeah um so yeah that was not cool. a lot of kiwi like bacon and eggs and none of that <laughs> nah. there's a little <laughs> place next door to the base and i'd have pancakes and that so i'd shoot over there in the mornings every now and then but no, it was a lot of pasta. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you mentioned there when we had a chat before around how how, how long the days could be, right? Because they'd be racing, something would break or they'd have a, I don't know if they have like a mini crash or whatever and then you guys would just have to work through yeah. the night? Yeah, so that's it. So the guys would be out sailing all day. They'd bring it back late afternoon. Um, so they'd come back into the tent. You'd have your torches on and going through looking for little cracks and trying to find any little issues that could cause damage the following day. Um, we've had at the time we'd had it tips on the foils sort of been blown up by hitting objects in the water 
So that would come back and you'd just have to work all day, all night, get it done so they could go out sailing the next day, you know. You couldn't have any um, days off from training for the for the sailors. Wow. So, um, no, it was good. It was a good environment to be in and just to be under the pump. Like, you sort of, it's when you sort of grow, right? Yeah. So. And how old were you then? I was in my young 20s, probably 24, yeah. something like that. It's perfect. You don't need sleep. No, no, no. Do that later on, right? <laughs> So then, okay, so then you, um, that's awesome experience, right? I mean, that's as good as an OE or something like that. That's, that's really cool, a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Not many people get to work on an America's Cup boat. So then you decided to, you kind of made your way back to New Zealand and why, why did you decide to get into building? Like, take me through your thought process on that. Yeah, so um, we came back and then I ended up jumping in with uh, the same company I was at previously making all carbon fibre components for Super Yacht. So I was working there and... I just thought, uh, like, for me to keep sort of growing and earning good money, I had to keep travelling, and I sort of wanted to be I'm a home person. Like, I like being around my friends, my family. I like driving the streets that I know. Like, I know a shortcut that way. Um, so it's all, the, all those little things. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'm, I'm going to start building." So I spoke to my girlfriend then and just told her what my plan was, and she's like, "Yeah, get into it." So. Um, one of the guys I was boat building with, he his um, brother-in-law at the time, he owned a building company, so gave him a buzz and he was like, yeah, sweet, pop down, met him and started pretty much within a week. So um, that was my first sort of intro, introduction to um, building and that house that house there was was just up here in Albany but that was built over like seven sections, it was, it was a monster for, a, um, for an awesome architect as well and that went on to win a few awards. So... Um, yeah, cool. sort of amongst it from the start. And surely there must be some benefits, right, coming from a boat building background, attention to detail, knowing how to use tools, knowing how to, you know, approach, you know, a build of anything. Um, there must be some crossover there, right, between that and, and or not really. Well, it's you know that something's got to be done perfect. You know you can't have water coming into the house like same as a boat. So it's about all those sort of things, and you're practical with tools. When you're boat building, you probably tend to use and make yourself more jigs to make things more efficient on site. Um, so we sort of brought that into the building, but then again, you've still got to learn like all the rules and regulations with building. So you can have a house pass, you know? Yeah. Um, so it is that learning aspect to it. So you can't just start the boat building apprenticeship and then just pretty much have half of your building apprenticeship signed off. you still got to start from the start. Yeah, kind of make your way through. So a building business owner would be excited when a guy comes and he goes, yeah, I used to do boat building, they would be excited about that. Yeah, actually. yeah. Well, I had one working with me until we went back to Team NZ. Um, he was working with me when we first sort of went out on our own. Um, and I also brought another boat builder with me to another company we are working at. And it's, I reckon they're, they're, they're better than standard builder, definitely. Yeah, just because that foundations, I mean, it makes sense, right? Just yep. having that foundational aspect to it. Okay, so then you transitioned. So what was that first day like uh, as an apprentice on a building site? Like, was that, were you nervous or not really? Were you just uh, all the confidence in the world at that point? No, no, I'm always sort of nervous until sort of get my feet wet. Um, so we pretty much I started all the cedar sarking on all the safetes, um, me and this other guy. We we're doing that through the whole house and... We started working our way to the inside, doing all the cedar on the inside, and, and I was, it was good. Like I got a good variety of work at that time, and it was was luxury building as well. So I was sort of lucky in that aspect. I wasn't just building your stock standard sort of cookie cutter home. Yeah. So no, I definitely enjoyed that. From l luxury yachts to luxury, luxury homes, homes yeah. <laughs>